Good Thursday evening, everybody. Live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. It's a quiet night in the Mid-South. It's definitely warm. It's pretty steamy out there and will continue to be so throughout the next several days. We do have the potential of some slightly less hot weather coming our way. But unfortunately, that's going to be several days away at best. But it's going to arrive right about the time we head our way into autumn. So right about the good time for that. Unfortunately, we've got, still got pretty sneaky days ahead. And that's going to be, again, the main concern for right now. More chances of showers and thunderstorms out there. Again, we'll be monitoring those for any possible problems. Doesn't look like any severe weather heading our direction, but again, that's something we'll definitely be keeping our eyes on, so keep it tuned to the weather experts for more. Never been here before? Drop your name and your location. Well, you got your name up there, but drop your location and whatever weather reports you've got into the comments section. We'll read off some of the temperature and other weather reports that we have out there for this evening to give people an idea as to what's going on. If you're not in the Mid-South, that's North Mississippi, East Arkansas, and West Tennessee. Go ahead and tell us where you're from anyway. Let's see who's the farthest away from earlier tonight. And thanks a lot again for everybody for joining us. Can't stick around for the whole forecast. Blue bar showing again the forecast scrolling by for the Mid-South area. And again, if you can't stick around for the whole thing, we'll be on here for a few more minutes. Drop by WREG.com slash weather for more weather information on that. And of course, we'll have an update coming up here on News Channel 3 at 10. So keep an eye on that for the next several meetings, for the next several minutes and we'll give you an idea as to what we need to do. Tracy loving my family Miller sound. Unfortunately this is the best uh, opportunity for right now that I have until the engineers get my microphone fixed so I may want to switch to the headphones on that because unfortunately it's going to be decently quiet unless I shout and of course I don't want to be rude about that so that's about as good as it gets for right now. Thomas Sanders, 80 degrees in Ripley. Thanks a lot for stopping by for more information uh, for weather and thanks for joining us on that one. Uh, Ripley, Tennessee, Thomas Sanders, thank you very much. West Memphis, Justice Jeff Freeze. Thanks a lot for dropping on by for this evening and everybody else stopping on by for right now. Who else we got here? Clarksdale, Mississippi, Verita. I hope I'm saying that right. Ingram. Uh, welcome to everybody checking in from around the rest of the area. Uh, Cameron McNeil, good morning, good evening, and uh, yeah, we're all praying for some cooler temperatures, not seeing any of them, them anytime soon, unfortunately. 95, well above normal, 5 degrees away from a record high temperature for Memphis today, nothing in the rain gauge, and again, 15 inches ahead for the year, we are doing quite fine on rainfall for the time being at about 10 degrees above where our low temperatures should be for this time of the year as well. 77 degrees at Oxford at the airport north of the Mississippi, University of Mississippi campus. Again, people out and about around the Student Union for this evening and looking again at some quiet and dry conditions at least where rainfall is concerned. Definitely not feeling dry out there with a humidity of about 89%. Fading sunset around the area of Rhodes College from the Weather Underground webcam, also available online and looking back to the northwest with again not too much going on there. West Memphis, Arkansas, I-40 traffic moving along also looking back toward where sunset was just a little while ago, 82 at the West Memphis Airport, 74% humidity and a high temperature of about, well, heat index anyway, of 87 degrees for right now. Also a good view, clear skies for the most part, looking from I-55 around Baptist DeSoto in South Haven looking back toward the north and west and also not seeing too much of anything changing for right now. Again, we have a cold front on the way. It's not going to be doing too much of anything to help us out, unfortunately. Right across the Midwest, that's where we're seeing more showers and thunderstorms pop up from the panhandles all the way back up into the western Great Lakes. Here in the Mid-South area, again, little if anything going on. Did have some pop-up showers and thunderstorms earlier today on Storm Tracker 3S radar. Pretty much a clean sweep as we go into the 8 o'clock hour. Temperatures also pretty toasty out there, even at 8 o'clock at night. Heat index on the University of Memphis campus back in the mid-90s. Lower 90s around City Hall in Germantown. That's what it feels like out there. Regular air temperatures here. Heat index is here. And again, pretty steamy out there for the next several days. The weekend does not look cool in any way at this point in time. Gail... Brunson from Cape Hatteras, North Carolina. Welcome to the show as well. Linda Harity, hope I'm saying that right, from Bermuda. 
I'm assuming that's the island and not the one back up in Kansas, as far as I know. So welcome. Looks like you win the uh, farthest away for right now award for this evening. Okay, running the numbers into overnight. Not that cool on the temperatures. Matter of fact, as good as it gets tomorrow morning is going to be in the mid to upper 70s. And then we're going to be heating back up pretty quickly as we go toward lunchtime. Now, tomorrow afternoon, that's where we start to, again, heat back up. So the main story is going to be the temperatures back in the mid-90s. Unfortunately, right as you head out to pick up the kids from school and toward dinner time tomorrow night, could be, again, that potential for showers and thunderstorms around the Mid-South area. And it looks like some of that might be lingering around about the time we head for Friday night football, which means we could get some lightning delays out there. Uh, the game officials, the school officials really should be keeping an eye on the sky tomorrow. Remember, if you can see lightning or hear thunder, you are within range of getting struck. Your odds in a calendar year are actually very good for getting hit by lightning, so don't take the chance when thunder roars Go indoors. Let's all be safe out there when it comes to lightning safety out there. And again, continuing to see a good possibility of some more chances of showers and thunderstorms into the weekend. Not great, but again, still could be that possibility. So anything with outdoor activities tomorrow, tomorrow evening, through the weekend, that's where we're going to be seeing the possible problems out there. And more chances next week might precede another dip in the temperatures what we're hoping for anyway. We'll talk about that coming up in just a little bit. Again, through the afternoon hours, that'll be the best possibility of getting anything in the way of thunderstorms across the Mid-South. Beyond that, most of the day should be rain and storm-free. Heading toward lunchtime and afterwards, that could be a bit of a problem. And temperatures back into the mid-90s for Friday and Saturday. Repeat that performance for Saturday and into Sunday. Temperatures remain back into the mid-90s with chances of isolated showers and thunderstorms out there. Now, through the rest of the next several days, things start to, again, dip in the temperatures maybe by a degree or two, but that's really going to be about all that we see at this point in time. That's going to be about it. Bobby Midget from Talk Back Live, welcome to the show. Rain sounds very good. Unfortunately, we're just not going to be getting all that much of it, about a 15% coverage chance through the weekend. And again, 15% is not a great deal of land surface area covered to get some chances of rainfall out there. So very isolated popcorn-type thunderstorms is going to be your best bet. And that's really going to be just about it. Now, through next week, by midweek, we start to pick up the chances of showers and thunderstorms from Tuesday to Wednesday, continuing through about Thursday again, scattered, haphazard areas of showers and thunderstorms. That'll be the most of it. Now, if everything holds, and again, this is still very far out into the future, about 10 days or so, autumn officially begins next next Monday. Not this coming Monday, but the Monday after that. Autumn finally kicks in, and if everything holds, it's still too far away to say for right now, but there are signs we may be looking for some much more, and dare I say it, very well-deserved knockoffs in temperatures at this point. So if everything works by the beginning of autumn, we may see again some nicer temperatures out there. Now again, a lot can change between here and there. Again, we get complaints about the forecast. Well, why can't you forecast two weeks, two months, two years in advance? You live on a spinning ball in space where the air is swirling around. A lot of things can change. So, again, it's important to check back with the forecast as often as possible from the weather experts, and we'll keep you updated on what may change, what the differences are, when we can expect other changes going on. So again, it's one of those things you really have to pick up on. But hopefully, if this works, by the time we head our way into and around autumn, things will be feeling a little bit better out there. We'll see how that works out. In the meantime, get set to stay cool because through about next Friday, continuing to be some pretty steamy weather out there for the time being. So not really seeing much good news at this point in time. Back into the tropics, right over the same area that Dorian was about maybe a week or so ago. And as of right now, we're still watching another system developing down here. It doesn't look like much for right now. This is potential tropical cyclone number nine. And that's the official designation, calling it what it could be. It hasn't formed into a tropical storm just yet, so it doesn't have a name. And the winds at this point in time, 30 miles per hour, not really moving all that fast. It's just around and north of Cuba. 
unfortunately going right through that area of the Bahamas once again. It's disorganized. It's more of a mess of showers and thunderstorms for right now, so we're just not seeing a lot of development. Hurricane Hunter plane flew into this several hours ago, wandered on through collecting data, and is now heading back. No signs that it's intensifying for now, but in the next couple of days, Here's where it gets interesting. We could be looking at another tropical storm as we go into possibly tomorrow afternoon at this point, according to the updated forecast. Now, if this becomes a named tropical storm, it will be the H storm, and in this case, it will be Umberto. Now, the news at this point looks like it's going to be taking it through and around the area of central and eastern parts of Florida, Orlando, north of Miami for the most part, and so far looking to be just a tropical storm, at least for right now. Now beyond that, the computer models, again, the lines that we study on the screen that show which direction the storms may be going in various locations. For now, this is the official National Hurricane Center forecast. It will be making its way through southern Georgia, parts of the Carolinas. You really shouldn't focus on the center part of this line right here. What you should be focusing in on is this white line, this cone showing where it could possibly go. Could go as farther west, the center of circulation, as western and southern Georgia. Could curve its way back out into the Atlantic fairly early. Now, that being said, that potential again starts off being fairly small and becomes very wide again as the future goes we still have a lot of things that can happen, so there's more possibility of a lot of things happening than just right here at the beginning where it's a lot clearer to see what's happening close up, more a little bit closer to the event. Now, as we go beyond this forecast, heading past Sunday afternoon, some of the computer models, not a great deal of them, but some of them are doing a very good job of taking what could be Umberto and moving it back around again kind of looping the loop as we go into early next week. Now, again, that is just a couple of computer models. It's a possibility, though. So, again, we have to watch and see what goes on. We'll be waiting to see what goes on with the National Hurricane Center. And, again, about five days out, that's their forecast that we have right there. From that point onwards, the possibilities stack up to be too much, and there's nothing set in concrete. So if you're heading toward Florida in the next couple of days, you may have Umberto to deal with. And again, parts of the Carolinas and southern Georgia could be the next target for this. Now, this forecast will change tonight, it'll change tomorrow, and it'll change again over the next several days. So please keep it tuned to the weather experts for more details on what may happen out there. And again, we'll keep you advised as to what's going on across much of the area. All right, back into the Mid-South. We are approaching the second severe weather season. First one is from January through about April. Second season is roughly October through about December, where we can get some very nasty storms out there. National Weather Service and we here at News Channel 3 could use your help. If you would like to volunteer to become a Skywarn spotter, a trained spotter, to see what's going on, report that information back to the National Weather Service, your information could save lives, and it's a very good opportunity to serve your community. Now, the first one coming up, will be in just about uh, almost a little bit over 10 days or so, about two weeks away. It'll be held at Poinsett County, Arkansas, Truman Fire Department in Truman, Arkansas at 801 West Main Street. That'll be the first of about a baker's dozen of meetings to be held all the way across the Mid-South area at various locations. And we also have more of them coming up. Second one will be a little farther outside the News Channel 3 viewing area for Benton County, Tennessee. Big Sandy Fire Department in Big Sandy, Tennessee, 80 Ballpark Road. Again, that'll be Monday, September 30th at 6.30 p.m. Why are we telling you about this if it is way outside the News Channel 3 viewing area? Maybe you know somebody who is in that area. Maybe you, again, are going to be traveling through there and would like to take the course. Again, they're going to be all over the place that the National Weather Service covers. If you'd like to see the entire list of meetings, here's what you do. Go to weather.gov slash MEG and click on the Skywarn logo and information and it will list all the meetings again for you to take at this time. Totally free, last about an hour, hour and a half depending on how many questions are asked and answered. Great place for kids, I would say as old as about eight or nine and upwards. If they have any interest in science or weather, 
might have a kid out there that's very scared of what goes on with weather, especially strong storms. This is a great class for them to take if, again, they are old enough to see a little bit more about how weather works. And if you'd like to know more about this, again, all you have to do is just drop me a line at austin.onic at wreg.com, and would love to know more about that, and we'll give you the information like that. Just drop by and say hello, and we'll see what we can do for you. Now, tomorrow at the school bus stop early during the day, going to be humid, going to be very warm, sunrise temperatures in the mid to upper 70s only, so not that cool into tomorrow. By the time we dismiss, it's going to be hot and humid with an isolated chance of a shower or thunderstorm, so you won't need the rain protection on the way to school. Coming back home again, again, that might be a little bit of a different story. Likewise, tomorrow night, getting the prep games underway, it is possible the kickoff temperatures will be in the 90s, and as we go throughout the rest of the forecast, going to be, again, only in the lower 80s by the time the games wrap up. Maybe a chance of a thunderstorm out there, but really not much of a chance of a thunderstorm. But, again, could be some delays. So, again, keep it tuned to News Channel 3 for the latest. Again, extra ice water would not be a bad idea. And dress cool because it's going to be warm and humid all the way throughout the evening time. It's also going to be a pretty hot weekend out there. So, for the Southern Heritage Classic, for the Cooper Young Festival coming up this weekend, Keep your cool, stay in the shade if you can, try to time things out a little bit to make certain that you are, again, looking at the possibility of some more in the way of very hot weather. So please take it easy if you're going to be doing anything out there for right now. Now, chance of a shower and thunderstorm, again, doesn't sound like much, but again, if you're stuck outdoors, severe weather is going to be, again, a potential problem out there. So again, please keep that in mind. If anything happens, keep it tuned to new Channel 3, and we'll keep you advised as to what's going on out there throughout the course of the rest of the weekend. Uh, Rhonda Kester, hope I'm saying that right. Uh, anything else coming off of Africa that we need to keep an eye on? Right now, we are seeing a couple of minor areas for the time being. Uh, don't have it loaded up on the computer graphics screen, but keep it tuned again to wreg.com slash weather and, of course, our social media channels so we can keep you updated on that. But in the meantime, nothing immediate is happening uh, at this point, so definitely some good news on that one. Joe Craig Sanders, 42 in Alliance, Nebraska, saw there was a storm system, that one coming on through that dropped some snow in parts of the Colorado Rockies, so a little cooler out that direction from what it sounds like. Thank you very much uh, again for that check-in for right now. Jen Hendricks Cobb, Memphis Gal, 80s and 90s temperatures through the 21st. Uh, Sunday, 6 p.m., coolers. Yeah, well, hopefully, again, that forecast pans out. We'll see how well that goes for right now, anyway. That'll wrap it up for this edition of News Channel 3's exclusive video weather blog, Weather Overtime. We'll have an update on News Channel 3 at 10. Plus, don't forget, Friday morning, it gets going to be pretty busy out there. A lot of traffic, a lot of construction going on before the weekend kicks in. Corey Ventura has your update starting at 5.30 a.m., and Todd Demers has your complete forecast that'll be coming up on News Channel 3. Daybreak starting at 4.30 tomorrow morning. Want to know more about the International Space Station flying over? Keep it tuned again to my social media network channels, and we'll keep you updated on doing some stargazing out there and, of course, throughout the rest of the weekend. Live and direct, I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. Thanks for joining us for Thursday evening's exclusive edition of News Channel 3's Weather Overtime video blog. And stay tuned for much more with News Channel 3 on air and online throughout the rest of the evening and right on into the weekend.